What's up, everybody? Welcome back to a very special episode of Hollywood Tales with uh, my co-host, Blake Barty. Yeah. My name is Ahmed Ahmed, and I have in studio, we have in studio, my sister, Amira Ahmed. Welcome. Hey, thanks for having me. We're going to get into your story in a second. I just want to do a little disclosure, disclaimer up front. This is Jam in the Van. We are here every week recording podcasts live or pre-recorded. If you haven't been here, come check it out. It's a Jam in the Van Studios in West L.A. on Motor Avenue between Venice and Pico. Um, if you haven't been, they do everything here. They record music. They play music. They do live comedy. It's very 420 friendly. Um, <clears throat> they were sponsored by Liquid Death, which is just mountain water. It's just water. I know it looks like a stiff drink, but it's just water. This is a beer. This is... Not they're not, not sponsored. Yeah, not, they're not sponsored by Stella. Stella. But soon, Stella, come sponsor us. <laughs> Go to jaminthevan.com for future shows. Um, check us out, Hollywood Tales Podcast. Excuse me. On YouTube, Spotify, Amazon, Apple, iTunes. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, I keep burping. <laughs> I know that sounded that sounded a little feminine, right? Oh my gosh, I keep burping. No, it's not feminine. It's just uh, gross. But okay, God. whatever. <laughs> COVID. <laughs> I want to thank the Jam and the Van, <laughs> Van guys for having us here. Uh, Jake and Dave, who own the place, Jake Trainer, our venue manager, Jack Higgins, our cr awesome creative director, and one and only Wolf Ramirez behind the scenes, puppet mastering this whole, this whole thing. Thanks, Wolf. Woo. Um, all right, let's get into it. Hollywood Tales episode. God knows what. Amira, my beautiful. I have four sisters. Amira. Falls in, I think your number, gosh, I forgot, number three? Number three. Number three. Uh, so what, what order? Samaya, my oldest sister, Nanis, under her, and then? Me. You. Yeah. So she's your youngest sister? No, no I, there's, there's another there's one. There's another. Young, yeah, there's Sarah. Another one. Okay. She, we'll have her on the podcast later. A little bit about our background. We grew up in Riverside, California. I was born in, our, our background is Egyptian. I was born in Egypt raised in the US and um, you were born here and raised here. And we grew up in Riverside, California, uh, four girls, two boys. It was a very loud and rambunctious household and lifestyle. A lot of doors slamming, a lot of, fuck you, that's my bra. And, uh, how dare you take my lipstick. And why does he have your bra? Not exactly. me, the <laughs> sister. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, hey, let's not, let's not get weird. Real in, real in the jokes right now. <laughs> I grew up with four sisters, and it was fun and tough and beautiful and educational. and still is. It still is. They so. definitely put makeup on you at some point. For sure. You, you guys, for sure. I remember a couple times they put makeup on me, and I, I went along with it. Because, you know, when you're the brother, you just have to kind of go along with you it. You didn't know any better anyway. I didn't know any better. I think I was like, whatever, 15. I was like, who knows? Well, that's I a little was. old. I was thinking you were younger, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, by then you're making decisions about some other things. Oh, man. Yeah. All right, let's, I want to fast forward and get into what you're doing now and then kind of benchmark it and, and work backwards. Sure. You have a company right now. Yes. <clears throat> that you started. It's called Sugar Dynamite. Yeah. Sugardynamite.com is her website. She's on Instagram at Sugar Dynamite, and you can find her personal page, Exo Amira Ahmed, on yes. Instagram. You worked at Nordstrom's for 14 years. Yeah, 15 actually. 15 years. Uh, and then you worked at Sephora for another five. Five years. Right. And then you managed Glam Glow for a minute. You did some like. You I worked really for Glam Glow under Estee Lauder companies. Um, and then I left and I consulted um, for a few brands and some startup brands, all in beauty. Um, and then I worked for uh, Jouer Cosmetics for... I'm sorry? Jouer Cosmetics for a year. Jouer. Jouer. And... Uh, you said it. And then... <laughs> you can, because... Uh, uh, we're at the podcast. And... Uh, and then... Where did I... And then now I, I work for a small skincare startup, so... Aside from having my own business, because I'm bootstrapping it, I still have to work until I get some investors. Yeah. Got it. So, um, so yeah. let's so let's let's just go back to the beginning. So, Sugar Dynamite was conceived. What was the inspiration to do your body polish? And by the way, if you don't know what this is, yeah, let's explain it's it. It's a it's a you explain it. All right. So, Sugar Dynamite is uh, basically great name, by the way. Cool name, right? Yeah. So I had a, a, a name 
chosen. Um, and I remember talking about it just randomly at a cafe. And then I walk into European Wax Center and they had a whole line and it was like smooth me scrubs. And I'm like, oh, they stole my they idea. Heard it. <laughs> oh, it wasn't meant to be. And I like just spent like nights racking my brain. And it wasn't until I was in bed, you know, one night and I kind of went back to why I started the brand. And I'll get into that in a second. But it was to feel good. Right. And I was like, God, you know, sugar is the function. Dynamite's the feeling. And so back in, I would say like, oh, nine, um, you know, this was like during, you know, the economic, I don't want to call it a crisis. I want to call it like the biggest fraud that's ever happened. Oh, nine or oh, eight? Like, oh, nine. You talking about the housing? But housing. Yeah. yeah. All of that. Like, I was deeply affected by it. I was super stressed. I had um, uh, my body just freaked out and I developed, I triggered an autoimmune disease. I could have already had it, who knows, um, but I wasn't feeling good at the end of the day, and I wanted to feel better, and uh, so I, my skin was dry, my hair was dry, I was breaking out, I just, if, like, I could say any and everything that went wrong with me went wrong, yeah. and I was so sick, like, physically sick, and I was buying sugar scrubs, like, out in the market, and they were okay, but I noticed, like, this one was missing this, and this one was missing this, or this could be better if it had this. What were they missing? Like, either it was, like, a scent that lasted, um, something that, you know, felt invigorating, something that wasn't as oily or greasy, because um, there were scrubs that I used just to hydrate my skin and uh, or to feel moisturized, and then I'd wake up, and, like, my sheets had, like, oil stains on them and shit, mm. and I'm like, ugh, I paid 32 bucks for this? Like, with Is that the average price of a... Sugar scrub, 30 bucks? Depends on if you get something like more on the higher end. It's a lot more expensive. It can go to like 60. Um, at lower end, you're looking at like eight bucks for a big How much jar. is that jar? This jar is tw um, 20. Um, that's a good, that's a good even. Prices are going up. Yeah. So at the end of the show, we'll, you know, I'll get you the <laughs> discount code. Um, so y'all can put afford it. But, you know, I use grade A ingredients. Okay, so let's let's go to that because I you know I always make fun of you. My sister, always. when she started this body polish company entrepreneurial thing she was doing, she was like, "I said, what makes you different from other body scrubs?" She goes, "I use products that have no GMOs. It's all imported from South Africa. The shea butter is from New Mexico." When did I get that accent? By I the definitely, way, like I definitely pictured him with like the that? makeup on and when, everything. When you when you <laughs> use my scrub. And when you come out of the shower, if like somebody gave you a hug, that's true. Hell yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is. She's like, I said that. No, but so I was like, all right. So I, I was sold based on that pitch. And you are using. So go back. I, I just want to dissect it because scientifically, <clears throat> yeah. What does the sugar do? If you're a vegan, Exfoliate. if you're a vegan, the sugar. Well, so like, salt. Remember, like, okay. So they used to let me. Let's go back, back. You would see women back in history using um, sand from the beach. Okay. Yeah. And exfoliating their body with the sand. Okay. Uh, and then people started using salt scrubs, which is good. And it was a very a big thing in Asia because I remember it dries you when out, I lived right? in Asia, but it dries you out. Mm -hmm. Sugar doesn't and dry you out. And it irritates if you shave. So if you shave your legs, you use a salt scrub after, you're stinging. You're left stinging. Right. Well, sugar doesn't do that. And sugar also acts as a humectant. So it seals in. I'm sorry. What, what, what? A I've humectant. Never, I've never fucking heard of that word. What is humectant. That? Does anybody know what that? Wolf, you know what that word means? No, I'm dumb. <laughs> no, I'm dumb. <laughs> <laughs> what what is define hum I the humectant? Humectant. Like, yeah, look it up. Like, where's your laptop? She made it, it up. I this, made it up. What is okay, that? Right? Just kidding. <laughs> what is humectant? Humectant. What like, I don't know the, the uh, exact on. definition. Can Will you, you please it? so you can yeah, get like because I want to know because I'm going to use that against somebody. I'm going to say you're not using enough humectant. Define humectant. Lord. Let's see what comes up. Is that sick? Nope. Yes. <laughs> a substance, especially a skin lotion or food additive used to reduce the loss of moisture. A humectant. Hello? Honey is a humectant. Hey. Sugar is a humectant. Like, there are so I've, many things. I've never even humectant. heard that. I, I should get a, a thesaurus. Mm. <laughs> That's another word for locking in moisture. Is this safe for diabetics? Yes. 
Yes. So hold on. So yes. let, let's go back really quick because you use you import the the butter the shea butter from South Africa. You told yep. me right from Africa. From Africa. What part of Africa? Um, it is from Ghana. And how do you know it's legit? How do you know it's not like blood diamond? Well, because you. <laughs> I'm just Wolf. I'm asking. Help me through this podcast. <laughs> I have 40 more minutes. All we're right, good. we're good on time. So, um, no, that's that's where I think as a company you look at supply chain and supply chain transparency, and you have to do your homework and you have to be diligent about really scrutinizing if you care and you give a shit about supply chain and transparency and other people in other parts of the world who are producing this stuff for you. To scrutinize so it. So you're you're vetting them. Totally vetting them. As to where you're sourcing the material from. Uh, right. Okay. And so, you know, is it fairly traded? And then what are the fair trade practices? Mm. Um, See, that's a lot of homework. I've, I, I'm too lazy to do It is. That. Well, when I was, so in 09, 2000, 2009, 2010, when I was really sick, I mean, there were days I couldn't get out of bed. And l- looking to make Sounds this like me every Saturday morning. <laughs> Um, about every day. So <laughs> <laughs> um, it's like, we're running a little behind. I'm like, am I shot? No. <laughs> All right. Just kidding. Ding, 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 ding. So, um, and I'm not a comic. I just aspire to you be. Always, uh, <laughs> she always, she always, do trust me, secretly, she, this, she wants to be a comic. I don't. I can't. I can't. No, you will one day. Somebody's going to heckle me on stage and the heel's going to come flying off and then I like, end my <laughs> then career. Then you're definitely a med sister for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for fucking uh, sure. Exactly. <coughs> he's a, he's I told a, you to shut up and watch the show, <laughs> goddammit. And don't heckle me. Except he's a prettier sister, I guess. So. Um, but there were days I couldn't get out of bed and this gave me a purpose to keep going. And so if I couldn't get down the stairs to actually start making something or working or starting my day, I would grab my laptop and I would research and research more ingredients. And um, again, so it was like something that came out of, you know, something beautiful that that was born out of something so painful, painful and yeah. tragic and hard um, and still is not easy. But I researched all the ingredients. And one thing I didn't had no idea was that Sugar is actually like mostly white sugar is not vegan. Mm-hmm. I, I was t- so tell our listeners and yeah, watchers explain how that. explain that. So, um, because I, I didn't know this until you told me, yeah, and I didn't know until I started doing research and trying to figure out what kind of um sugar granule I wanted to use. Like, I didn't want to use anything too coarse, I wanted something more fine so it like rolled off the body and felt nice. I like giving you a massage. Um, and then, you know, I came across this sugar that was, it's in uh, from a farm in Mexico, and it's, the farm is free of fossil fuels. Okay. So I started doing more research, and then it's like, we're vegan. And I'm like, wait, all sugars, like, I thought sugar was vegan. It's just from sugar cane. No. The process. The, the way it's processed. So sugar, white sugar basically is white because it's bleached, and it's bleached from bone char. Bone char comes from. Do you guys know this? I didn't know this. Yeah, bone char comes from the bone of the animal. Bone, bone of, of cows. Cow. So cows are basically um, imported the cow bones actually from all over the world, and then they're charred and they're boiled down, and from that white foam they use that foam and they bleach the sugar. So like, it's the foam, not even the actual like. Yeah, it's sauce like the itself. by by byproduct. It's like of, it's like ghee butter. Well, and <laughs> I mean, and. <laughs> It's the top of, sorry. But like (laughs) animals, like nothing, I guess, goes to waste for animals. Like I had no idea that leather manufacturers, like they make leather jackets, um, they buy all the leather from McDonald's. McDonald's has these farms and they, Mm -hmm. you know, produce their beef, but then they sell off all the leather and the parts to like different places around the world. So you could be wearing a Mickey D's leather coat. I don't know. So (laughs) the vegan thing is important to you. It, it, it is. Um, but you're not vegan. I'm not I'm not vegan. I am mostly plant based. Um, but I, w- I w- did a music festival and I remember I set up shop. It was like the worst thing ever. Like who's going to buy sugar scrubs when you just want to get drunk, get high and They're watch like, Damien Marley perform? <laughs> yeah. I sold one four dollar like travel size oh, scrub. Um, but there was a girl who walks up and she says. Sounds like me as a comic. I sold one T-shirt. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
<laughs> I sold one CD. I hope people don't listen to CDs anymore. Okay, great. Uh, but I basically had a customer, and she <clears throat> she says, oh, you know, um, is it vegan? And I said, yeah, it's vegan. I said, even my sugar is vegan. And she said, what do you mean? Sugar's not vegan. And so when I told her, she started crying. Like she was like, oh, my God, I, I just had a cookie. And <laughs> she was freaking out. She was young, and I felt bad, but she was a diehard vegan, but obviously didn't know that most sugar is not vegan. So, And then I use um, coconut oil and a lot of, like, yummy, delicious oils. Mm. And then the scents are all skin-safe fragrances that I use. Um, so that's the only thing that's considered really synthetic. But it's to make you feel good. So I say sugar is the function, dynamite's the feeling. So when I came that should up, should be a song. Sugar is mm. the function. Damn We should do a little jingle for it. Just put it out there. Sugar's you guys go ahead and sugar is the do function. A jingle. I will not be doing a jingle. No, no, no. Sugar is the function. Mm, Don and I make you go boom. No, I'm telling you, sugar is <laughs> the function. I don't know what's happening. Thank you for having me. My brand is ruined. But uh, <laughs> one time I was with a girl. I didn't even know what exfoliating was, and like we were mid sex, and she is like on my back, and she goes, "Ew, you need to exfoliate." That's a, prob- that's a You problem. have a dirty back. And then I climaxed. I, I wouldn't uh, <laughs> share that story. <laughs> it was, no, I wasn't. I didn't, that's like yeah. an off and air. That's off it was a long time ago. Story. I had been exfoliating. So, so I let's, I let's make my own with sugar in the raw from Starbucks. Getting sure. So hold on. So you're talking about your ingredients. I've been to your, uh, in my sister's apartment, her kitchen looks like, and, and she looks like when you walk in, when she's like <laughs> built, like making this shit, it's like Breaking Bad, Wolf. She has, a, she has an apron and goggles and fucking gloves and an apron. And I remember walking into her kitchen one time. She's like, get out. You're going to contaminate my product oh, or whatever. It's a sterile field, huh? Yeah, and I was like, whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa, sorry. I was just coming for a glass of water. She's like, I'll get it for you. Just don't come in here. And I was like, all right. And she's like, she has these big buckets and she's got these big batches of like honey yeah. almond and black lavender. And it's really like like a like a drug deal not deal like a a operation operation going on in your apartment you do it by yourself you package it by yourself you got it trademarked on amazon fda approved it's not fda approved okay well (laughs) i take back what i said it smells smells amazing wolf Wolf got some wolf got a little taste i use it you know you it's it's you take a shower, and if you're ashy oh or you feel God, dry, that good. you put a little. Can you you, you, you put some edible? on your. No. Yeah, you can't eat that shit. Don't eat it. I I took a I took a hit one time and I got sick. <laughs> that was and, bath salt. And you and you you yeah. exfoliate and then you uh, just rinse off. You rinse off. I I like I like to let it marinate for a minute. You can let it marinate. You. And um, then I rinse off, and, I, and then I feel like somebody gave me a hug. How? Uh, what's a secret to like getting to your back? Like to, like. You need, uh, a, per- you you need, you need like, a person. You need a person. Or oh, okay. or you need a fucking you sh- you should trademark. You should come up with you that. Sh- you need something like an exfoliation. They're already on the market, Ahmed. No, not not the loofahs. I'm talking like for that. Like if you put like a mm-hmm. like, like a like, like you a, dispose it like a ruler or something like a, like a back yeah, scratcher yeah, yeah. that exfoliates. Yeah, a dispenser, sugar. a back dispenser. You know, something. Well, do you cut, use that? Cut this well, out of the the episode because somebody else is gonna. You do. I have the brush. You can use it on your face. I I tell people, like, it's not formulated for your face just because it's fragrance. Yeah. So you can put this on a brush. You can put this on, like, the the brush. Yeah, but you don't need to. You don't need to. Do you wash your back? I do with the brush thingy. I'm trying to wash your back. He's like, uh, with with the thing or with your hands? See, I'm the same way. I don't want it because I tried to use a loofah a couple times. Dad, God bless his soul, our father. Our father was big on loofahs, bro. He always rocked a fucking... He was like the OG exfoliator. That's Bro, he always had family. a six-foot loofah, and he'd always tell me, Ahmad, come bro, wash my back. <laughs> and I, uh, I'm like, you know, 12 years old, and he's in the shower, and he already did his whole thing. And the shower would, the shower would just be like steaming. Steaming, fucking, yeah. Like a steam room, bro. Hell yeah. And it smells like, you know, Old Spice and... He's in there, and like he's Jack like... Jack Nicholson, as good as it gets. You know, when he walks that scene, he walks out of the bathroom, and he and opens my dad, the door. And my dad would take the soap, the bar soap, usually it was like Dove or Irish Spring or whatever, and he would he would, he would, would really, like, like lather up the, the loofah. And he would say, okay, first, take the soap and rub it on my back. And I would do it, right? He said, get every inch. 
<laughs> make sure you don't miss a spot. I'm like, okay, dad. My dad was a mechanic, so he'd come home like greasy as fuck every night. Yeah. And not like one of those mechanics who like would lean over the like he was under the car. Like he was always had like gringy grit. Like he was always really he just walked in like a ball of grease every night. And then he would give me this loofah and he's like, Okay, now can you scrub my back? And I'm like, and I would do it. And he's like, harder. It's like harder. And like he wanted me to take off the fucking skin, I guess, from his back. Give him the massage while he's at it. No, I was just, you know, <laughs> if you don't know what loofah is, it's like a really intense sponge, basically. It's, it's I think natural. Everyone too, knows personal. what a loofah is. Some people, yeah. you'd be surprised. Some people in Middle America have no idea what a loofah is. I have the loofah. The, the you have one. Yeah. So I started, so I, I would scrub my dad's back and then he would say harder, harder. And I would sit there literally sometimes for half an hour. Damn. He just really want because I think he was on his back a lot. Like my laying girl in must Greece. have said, "Hey, you have you need to exfoliate." No, no. Well, no. <laughs> my dad was like pristine. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. He was like, squeaky clean, but he's always. as a mechanic, he would literally be on his, his back yeah. on the cement yeah, yeah, yeah. in oil. Like he mm-hmm. would lay in oil, fixing all kinds of weird shit. Stuff spraying in his eyes and gas and oil and carburetor fucking fluid and whatever you want to call it. He always came home with smelling like a gas station, and then he would he would spend an hour in the shower, and he always asked me to like. Scrub them down with um, the loofah, but most people don't do that. Most people don't wash their backs. Most people don't wash. Well, their backs. they don't have most a fucking son to call into the damn <laughs> thing and tell him has a half hour to spare to I mean, scrub their back. I mean, otherwise he wouldn't have had his chick have tell him that he needed to exfoliate. That has like a hard side and a softer Soft side. side. Yeah, you know that that when really I do that for some reason, good. it makes me fucking itch. This is because you you need to put lotion on it. No, but it's the it's the it's the trickling of the. The texture of the thing it like mm. makes me itch all the time. I, I don't like. You could be allergic to the plastic, the plastic or the coating that they right. use on, on the plastic, the thing, or right, right, right. could be a bunch of different yeah, things. Yeah, where did they source their materials? You know. Yeah, exactly. Are they sustainable? <laughs> Are they from South Africa? Are they? So, yeah. so you're making this stuff in your apartment, yeah. I, and I saw you from beginning to en- not end to now. Right. You 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 cook the batches, not cook them. You you mix them up in your kitchen. You put them in the in the in the containers, the jars, vacuum seal them, whatever, label them, take pictures. You're you're a, a one stop shop basically. Right. What is this? She's also packaging. She's also sending like delivering. Like she'll go to the post office, you know, because she'll have orders. Right. People will be like, oh, I want to order this and I want to order that. And then you'll you'll and then you'll go to the post office and you'll ship them out. So, literally one stop shop. I mean. It's a lot. I mean, I'm not going to lie. Everyone thinks entrepreneurship is easy just mm. because in the digital world, you see just the outcome. You never see the hustle. Yeah. So when I was a you should do a TikTok video global executive director, like I was working, you know, probably minimum 12 hours a day. Yeah. I'd call Ahmed if he was close or at my place. And I'm like, hey, I got, you know, six packages. I need to go to the post office. Mm-hmm. I need to. Can you drop those off? Well, I was like, I need you to drop those off for me. <laughs> but, um, and he was like, yeah, no problem, because I wouldn't make it to the post office on time. And my commitment was to get them, Ship it out on time. yeah, get them made and get them shipped on time. Um, but, you know, all in all, it's like, I love what I do. It's, it keeps me up at night, but at the same time, it really drives this, this inner um, passion, you know, and this creativity inside of me. Um, and eventually I'll be scaling, so I won't be making it in my apartment. Um, and it'll go, you know, on a bigger scale. Um, it'll go to a lab, and I can take that off my plate and then, you know, work on mm-hmm. other things. And so, you know, it's... it's. So how do you get there? How do you get to the lab? How do you get to the next... What's the next step People for buy that Sunday. product? <laughs> yeah, people buy. No, and then I'm just saying, like, you're, you're doing... You've been doing or are you going Shark Tank? You've been doing it on your own. Not, people, I, I told you to go on Well, Shark you get Tank. the funding. You get the funding like the, they do on Shark Tank. You get an investor maybe. Someone's already done that. Okay. You know, so I have another plan f- to take sugar scrubs to a whole new level that is a what they call a white space that no one's done yet. And what is that? Uh, I'm not saying on air, so yeah, she's not gonna stay tuned. Can we get an NDA? <laughs> for all the audience members you have a you have a plan i have a plan white i have space. you're just not going to tell anybody i'm yet. not going to tell anyone That's right smart. now and is the white space on the other side of a gray area no 
He's trying to be punny. I know he's trying to be. Very, I've never heard of white space. Very I punny. Like it. No, um, it's, a, it's a blank canvas that nobody's touched. Mm. It's like, no one's really it's touched. Like when I, when I brought it. comedy to the Middle East, nobody done it. I, Love I, it. I, yeah, right. yeah, and then yeah. you, you bookmark so it. You, know you make your it yours. I know my wife. You know what it is. I know what it is, on. and it's really important that when you have a business plan, you have one that's pliable. Oh yeah. And um, always consider the variables, right? So, like I use Live Plan, for instance. Not like I'm. I don't. I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but. Um, you can get a membership and you just pay monthly or you pay by the year and you have this business plan that you can put together and you can always update. So it's like when you're an entrepreneur, it's really important you want to be agile. You have to be agile, actually, because the landscape is always changing. Yeah. So if you're just stuck in your ways and you're doing the same thing, you're never going to grow your business. Cost of goods are going to go up. You know, you're dealing with inflation right now. You know, we're... Unfortunately, things are crazy right now. Unfortunately, yeah. Gas is like five sixty a gallon. And five sixty, almost six bucks. I don't know where you live, but where I live, it's almost six dollars. He's in. in Well, I have a Costco membership. Yeah, that's that's good. So, um, but the other thing is, I you know, it's also your purpose as an entrepreneur, um, as a brand, as a company needs to go beyond selling product. Mm -hmm. Like, as I have an emotional connection with this, some people do, and they're just like, wow. I love your purpose. I love, you know, I love I love your product. Um, you know, and I'm working on rebranding and all this other stuff. It's like, what else are you doing to go above and beyond to be a part of your community and an active part of that? Um, and I think you know, the past few years with this whole like racial reckoning, when um, everyone realized they were racist um, because they were told, <laughs> it was like, oh shit, as companies, you know it was like the crocodile tears came out. It mm -hmm. was like, oh my God, we realized we weren't inclusive. We realized that we didn't do a lot of community outreach. We realized, yeah. oh my God. And it's like, come on, like, where have you been? You know, so... Um, They've been binge watching Netflix. They just hopped <laughs> on the bandwagon. With yeah, I just yeah. hopped on the bandwagon. It was It's all like, a lot of it's performative activism, but it's like, you have to be a part of what is going on. And s for so many years, CEOs have been so disconnected from public sentiment. And if you're not com if you're not connected with the public um, and your audience and people outside of your audience, then really you're just selling more shit. Like, can we talk about what's in this stuff? Yeah, First I of saw all, something yeah, I called we did. Booter Spirit. So there spirit. are. It, this is a sugar dynamite hydrating body scrub. This is the honey <laughs> almond. Yeah, it's luxurious and intoxicating. How to use it? Please, not please. Place a small <laughs> scoop of mm. sugar. Sugar scrub on the palm of your hands, uh, massage it into your wet skin until the oils oh, so are emulsified. Okay. Yeah. And the sugar dissolves into the skin. Uh, rinse and pat dry. So you don't what what's what's the difference between patting dry and, and taking a towel and Gen gents, gentle. I mean you could, but you don't want to like wipe it off. Wipe it off. Right? Because the whole point of the shea butter being the second ingredient is that it leaves I like a really nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is yeah. No, this it's, is it's it's you, your raw. skin. This is ugly ass white skin just kind of glistening. Oh, your your ash your your ashy as fuck. It's oh yeah, I would. Ash Wednesday was yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> For real. Um, oh, I thought it was Smash <laughs> Wednesday. <laughs> it was Ash Wednesday. Uh, it's gentle enough to use for daily use. Precautions not for use on face. Why? Well. Because the oils, I guess. No, because of the not fragrance. You're not, like, technically the precaution is just you have to put that on there. It's like cosmetic labeling, FDA jargon. You don't want someone you to can. mess their eyeballs up, right? Yeah, but you just don't want people to, like, put it near their eyes because it might irritate their eyes, like if you get oil in your eye. Right. Or, so mm. it says, but some dude uses it on their skin. Wolf is about to use it on his face. Well, you, on, on your beard. Face, let us know. Beard. Let us on know. That's fine. Right, let us know, Wolf. Okay, it also says... Don't use an open skin. So if you love, if you like an open wound, you can't. You don't use it. Obviously. Are you gonna pack it with sugar scrub to like stop it from bleeding? Like you I don't can't. know. <laughs> uh, the ingredients for this honey almond one is uh, sucrose sugar, which is what sugar liquid. Or? No, it's just it's, a type it's of the sugar. I N C I, like the international, like the actual, like the actual scientific formulating formulated name for but sugar, not sucrose. but not the bone marrow sugar the regular not bone marrow the bone what do you call it bone char bone char that's okay. just where she gets her stuff it's so this, this is, is just a labeling. name of like what's you in just it. you have to i mean i can't say half the shea butter i see fruit uh cocoa nucifera coconut oil 
There's a lot of words I can't pronounce on here. Then maybe it's okay, because they're all like this, they're all the, the no. But I, I see where you're putting fruit powder, and it all sounds you know vitamin E, essential oils, fragrance. Oil. I took what, raw honey out of there. I think raw yeah. honey's on there. I took that out. So I saw raw honey. Why? Why? Because we're vegan. Yeah, so it could be truly so let's a talk vegan about product. Because I, I had a I had a discussion with a woman one night where she was saying like something about honey is not vegan because. It secretes from the uh, bees throw up. That's what honey. Is. Right, but if you're breastfeeding your child, mm-hmm. is he vegan or she vegan? Let's say you're a vegan and you have a kid, and you're like, oh, "My kids are going to be vegan." Do you breastfeed them? I would hope so. Yeah. Is breastfeeding vegan? Is what that's what I'm saying. saying. Like, isn't that that's uh, honeys are uh, uh, bees are. Look, y'all are like complicating the hell out of this shit. I don't get into it. All I'm saying is, like, there aren't enough bees in the world. Like, uh, like bees, beehives are getting stolen. Like, we got to protect the bees. So it's like, I'd rather. But there's also like murder hornets. I'd rather eat honey for like the nutritional, you know, benefits of it than just put it in my scrub and it gets rinsed off. Have you tried manuka honey? Yeah, do you of know course. What that is? Yeah, do I know what Bro, that is? Bro, my sister, just so you know, <laughs> I know. she's an herbal insults. like I mastermind. I'll, I'll send her stuff that so I saw <laughs> on TikTok. She's like, already seen it. Do I already. know what Manuka honey is? I've the already been Zealand. there. Don't tell me what. I, I've seen this hat before. Well, because on TikTok, it's like everybody's recycling the same shit. It's like That's all why they call same. it a hack. Yeah, it's bullshit. It's, it's all like It's lip syncing and bullshit. Are you on TikTok? Yes, very minimally. Like, why don't I, you get on it? You'd be great if you show people how you make your thing and distribute it. Sure, just give out my whole recipe. Yeah, and be like, no, 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 not, not, not the recipe, the process. Like how you, not what you put in it, but like I know I because I, I've seen it. I've like from beginning to end. She cooks it in her kitchen. She packages it. She takes a picture. She labels it. Yeah. She takes it to the post office. She ships it out. And then she gets feedback from her customers. Yeah, this was great. Thanks so much. I Once a woman them. likes a product, though, they'll be like, they're like, hooked. They're yeah, like they're I, hooked, right? I did a podcast last week, entrepreneurial st- struggle, and um, it was interesting because the guy said, you know, what should you focus on rather than like not focus on? And I said, don't get hung up in the details. Mm. Like so, when Ahmed. Um, uh, said, oh, you know, I want to send some scrubs to Tiffany Haddish. I just, you know, reached out to her and she said, you she know, she'd love it. some. She got some. Didn't she? And I was a little hesitant because I'm like, oh shit, I'm redoing my labels because these look janky and they're ugly and they weren't supposed to, they didn't turn out they were the, the way they were supposed to. And I was so hung up in my head about, I can't say the minutiae. That just means the minutia. I could. Yeah. And then I had to like, check myself and i was like wait a second like this is an opportunity just do it like yeah. it's about the formula and until yeah. somebody gives me twenty five thousand dollars to work on new packaging this is what it is whitney yeah. cummings used it and she posted she did. it she, she posted, posted it on her like she goes i don't know later. where this came yeah, from but nice. this is amazing yeah it was totally she was, I was like, like Bitch, I'm i said it. i have my sister <laughs> said it to you what are you talking about she's you like i'm scrubbing all the bad vibes in la away and i was like she posted yes. she she posted your company on instagram she didn't mention you and she, she did put, well, she yeah, mentioned, she didn't. She, she mentioned, mentioned sugar your, dynamite, company, but she she actually said because I, I remember seeing her story. I remember I, seeing it too. I don't know where this package came from. You know, she's busy. I get it. But knowing Whitney, she probably gets like 50, thousands, thousands of packages yeah. of like everybody wants swag celebrities to shit, use their stuff. You know, yeah. so the fact that I got organic, non-paid PR yeah, is like, cool. thank you, Ahmed. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Sled Brother. <coughs> My sister, just so you know, uh, I every time I get a chance to plug her sugar dynamite, I always do. I went on Heidi and Frank oh, one I morning. K L O S ninety five point five K L O S with Heidi with Heidi and Frank. You never know, heard of it? Rock and roll in the morning. Yeah, no, they're like Southern it. California's hottest. He's heard of it. He listens to it every morning. What are you talking about? Well, if you've heard of yeah. Heidi and Frank. I went on there and I brought some of Amira's scrub and I was talking about it. I was doing like a funny impression of you and whatever. And Heidi's like, oh, my God, I love your sister. This is great. And Frank's like, what do I rub this on? And Sugar, <laughs> sugar Dynamite. <laughs> Sounds like a terrorist lotion, if you ask yeah, me. Yeah, they were like, leave it <laughs> to the Arab to bring <laughs> yeah, dynamite leave it in up here. Yeah, leave it to the Arab to use the word dynamite <laughs> in the product. Oh, God. But anyway, uh, I think you sold like 2000 bucks worth of fucking product that morning. Yeah, it was it was crazy. Nice. I was I was in Catalina for a wedding. And I was so nervous. She's getting all I'm these like, orders. Shit. I'm like getting these orders, and I'm like, <laughs> "Where'd these come from?" Your brother fucking I met on that. I'm stuck. 
<laughs> All right, here's some shares. When this airs, you better have 100,000 of those ready. And if it fire. doesn't, then your show sucks. I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, <laughs> Hollywood, <laughs> Hollywood Tales... <laughs> Hollywood Tales is a brand new podcast. We really I love it. This is awesome. We haven't really caught fire yet, mm-hmm. but we will. You will. You will. And you know what's cool about this place? It's, uh, you know, the guys who run this whole operation, Wolf behind us, and, the, and yeah. the two Jakes, and Dave, and Jack, Grace. It's a really tight operation here, and I've never really had the opportunity to kind of have a voice and bring a co-host and do something that I want to do where there's no rules. And so I'm, you know, I'm grateful to be here finally but. i've never seen so many stoners be so productive oh yeah <laughs> like i walked in and i was like it smelled like weed and i'm like am i in the right place yeah and then it's like everybody's stoned but everybody's like everybody's working. super productive you know and i'm why? like what kind of weed are you smoking sativa. that i don't know <laughs> there's, there's about sativa like shit they're smoking the upper <laughs> when you're oh, smoking yeah. indica <laughs> trust me everyone's taking naps everywhere but <laughs> These guys really know what they're doing here. Yeah, I love this being is here. an amazing place. Thank you, Jam in the Van. Yeah, you should you should come back continually and just be on more episodes. Yep. Let's. Uh, we have a couple more minutes before we, we we try to keep these podcasts at like under fifty minutes. We should just plug this every episode until we get some more sponsors. I'll sponsor yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, sponsor it. Whatever um, you want. Yeah. Talk about what's coming up for you, and then tell us your best Hollywood tale. All right. So what's coming up is uh, more shipment to Amazon. I am scaling and I'm redoing the website and uh, I have some sugardynamite.com sugardynamite.com actually and, and Instagram I have notes um, yeah Instagram sugar dynamite Facebook if anybody uses Meta anymore sugar dynamite um, <laughs> discount code for you guys audience members through April 30th Hollywood oh I like it Hollywood you get are 20% we, are off are we able to post that at some point Wolf yeah. nice what Yeah, so let me know. Put in, like, yeah, we'll, have the we'll put it. We'll put it in the graphics yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Awesome. So, what was it? Hollywood. Hollywood. Twenty percent off through April thirtieth. So twenty bucks. This is twenty bucks. Yep. And you get twenty. And what, you get twenty percent. Yeah. Don't you have like some really big jars $4. too? I do. So ones. those come in three different sizes, um, and then eventually, like once I get through um, these like lovely white caps, it'll be like the flip top. There are mm-hmm. like a lot of different things um, in the pipeline. That are that are coming. What uh, what other product do you want to do after this? Oh, I can't tell you. Well, I she's, I, she's <laughs> on the NDA. I do have I do yeah. To I myself. mean, just a g- in general, <laughs> like, it's something beauty care ish related. Uh, really Stand body. I, I like body products. You know, I don't care. Like nobody, you know, women don't need another lipstick or a lipstick brand. I don't care. I don't care about like you know lotions. It, like for me, it's about body products, but it's also um, purpose and feeling. Mm. So really somebody can take it and go like, God, you know, this is like self care to a whole nother level. Like I had a friend who full time working full time, full time mom. Um, and she's like, I don't have time to go to the spa. And this is like my little ritual little that I, I give myself. Yeah. Right. So there it is there, but some, some great stuff to come. Sweet. Yeah. Look forward to it. I love my sister. She's all my sisters are super, super entrepreneurial. But Amira, not but, <clears throat> and Amira is kind of like the, uh, you know, you've always been kind of on the forefront of like creating your own brand, your own vibe, really being like. I don't follow people or things or no shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't care. <laughs> I'll take this back. Okay. Um. Tell us your best Hollywood tale. Gosh. Funny, it could be funny, it could be dark, it could be. There it, are it, so it doesn't many. have to. It doesn't. It, it doesn't have to ha- have happened here in Hollywood. It could it, just something Hollywood associated. Okay, so. Um, and we know a lot of the same people. So. We, yes. Um, y- so when Ahmed was doing Dublin's mm-hmm. years and years ago, and it was like the hottest spot in L.A. and. Dublin's I, what? Tell them. Oh, Dublin's the the comedy. Uh, show he would have with like DJ Crash is like the DJ and mm-hmm. um, it became like the hottest spot on Sunset Boulevard mm-hmm. and Sunset Boulevard for stand up comedy in that like era like what like five years like how long strong was that the Dublin's days yeah it was about four yeah. about four years yeah. it was like strong. Dublin's was like the sh- the just the one that stood out above all of them. Yeah. Um, but then you had like Guy Tori doing Chalka Sundays on a Tuesday night. And then you had like Comedy Store and you had like all these different 
things, but Dublin's was it, and everybody wanted to go to Dublin's. So I would promote the show to my friends, and I swear to God, I had like people off of every exit off the 60, like from Riverside to LA, <laughs> that I knew that would come out. Hell yeah. And so it became a thing, and so and people were always calling me, and it was it was packed, and it was such a great venue because Dublin's, like you could you could get a table and have dinner. You had comic after comic after comic. Um, there was a whole like bar vibe going on and then like celebrities would come through there. Um, and then it was like dinner was done. Co- you know, comics started like to wean down. We like Alonzo would always like end the show. He Alonzo was like Bowden. Alonzo Bowden, everybody. Oh, One of the funniest comics yeah, yeah. on the planet. And uh, the tables would get removed and they would, DJ Crash would start spinning and it would be this whole like hip hop, hip hop dance floor, like bottle service. I was like, I danced with Justin Timberlake once, you know, he was, <laughs> he was wearing like the boys, you know, the, the boys to men, like denim shorts. That Timberlake like, would come when he was, when, <laughs> he, was when he had da- the top ramen hair. He was dating, when yeah. he was dating Britney Spears, they would come in literally every night. Mm. And then one night he came in with Cameron. Remember Cameron and Diaz? And then he started yeah. dating Cameron Diaz. But he used to call us up and say, Hey, can we get a table? He would actually go through our friend's Pantera, Sarah. Right. She would say, I'm mad. Timberlake's coming in. Can I get a booth? I'm just like, of course. Yeah. So she always had her booth, and she has to come on this podcast. She yeah. she needs to come on this, this sister, podcast. This sister is bad. Sarah's she's, badass. She's badass, bro. Much respect. But uh, so back to the Hollywood tales. So I would always be at the show every Tuesday night. And I remember I had biology class at like 9 a.m. the next day at like San Bernardino Valley College. So it was just so hard. Right. But I did it anyway. And my friends would show up. And I remember I'm outside of Dublin's and I thought I was like classy. I had on a dress and I was smoking cigarettes. So I would, you know, go outside to smoke. And I'm standing there and uh, Ahmed comes out just to like get a breath of fresh air between comedians. And these guys walk up, and they start. You, you probably don't remember this, and Alonzo doesn't remember this either. <laughs> I remember. I know, so, I know what you're going to say. And these guys wanted to get on stage, and Ahmed's like, "Bro, you got to call me like in advance, and you know, I can I can look to book you on the show." And Ahmed's like being really nice, and he's like, "I, I got to go back up because yeah. you know, I got to bring up the next comedian." So Ahmed jets upstairs, and these guys are kind of like talking shit because they don't know that n- people see us and they don't know we're related unless they know us. So Everyone are... thinks I'm dating my sister, by the way. <laughs> and it's no, so it's weird. true. Like and people are literally like, "Dude, your chick's hot." I'm like, "I'm related to her, guy." That's my sister. Don't look at her. I don't don't yeah, turn your turn your face away. Not that you talk like if that. If I had but... a sister, I would not even be able to go. I have four, with her bro. Because I would just want to fight everybody. I have four sisters. I'm. I, that's why I got in so many fights younger. Yeah. So. <laughs> Younger now. Especially if your sisters He's are still beating starters. people up over me. I'm 51. I'm still fighting. I'm like, I'm 46. Can you like stop cock blocking my shit? So <laughs> it's it's hilarious because <laughs> we're almost done. Well, I'm reeling this oh, in. Shit. So I'm outside. Ahmed runs back upstairs. And I'm smoking a cigarette, and these guys are talking shit because they think Ahmed's just kind of like pushed them out. When Ahmed told them, like, call me and you know we can try to look at you know getting you booked I on the show. Nice to, I was always nice. He was always nice. nice. These guys are talking shit, and so I like take a drag of my cigarette, and I have my hand on my hip, and I tell these guys, you know what? I help promote this show, and how dare you? And let me tell you something, and you, d- I'm going off on these guys, and these guys are looking at me like, who the fuck are you? And I'm, you know, protective little sister, uh, uh, protect <laughs> totally, hand on my hip, and you know, and suddenly these guys like look down, they kind of like deflate. And they kind of like look down and and they walk off. And I'm like, that's what I thought. And I turn around and Alonzo, Alonzo Bowden, Bowden is standing behind me the whole time <laughs> like this. Bro, you know Alonzo. Yeah, yeah. He, and he's, he's the nicest six, person. Five. I don't know him. Know him All he has to do is stand up. Like, he, <laughs> he doesn't he, have he, to say anything. Alonzo, if you don't know Alonzo Bowden, he looks like a defensive end for the Detroit Lions. And he is the he's, nicest. He's six five, probably six six. Big, in shape, like muscular, yeah. 240 pounds easily. Super nice, has a real deep voice. Yeah. Now, I've never even, I've never heard him raise his voice. He has, a real, he has a great radio voice. If you don't know Alonzo Bowden, check him out. Go just find him on the internet. But he's done that a couple times. He always, he always walks up behind people when somebody's getting in an argument. And he just and stands the, and there. And we think we did something. And the person walks away and we go, yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, what's up, Lonzo? <laughs> yeah, I, you know, because he smoked at the time too, and it was like he came out to have a cigarette before he, you know, went on stage, and he just he saw me, and then he saw kind of like this back and forth, and he's like, "I'm just gonna stand right behind her and just eye these dudes," and that's all he had to do was stand. Everybody loves my sister. Every time she comes out and meets my friends, and well, back in the day when we used to run around Hollywood. People were like, oh, man, man, what's up, man? Good to see you. Where's Amira? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what? They're like, dude, your sister's so cool. Is she not out with you tonight? I'm like, no, no, she's not. Like, I would use that. I'd you use bring out my out friends. Out I did. And I'd show up to, like, the spider room or, like, my all these hot clubs. My sister basically used me to get around. And <laughs> walked, <laughs> like, walked lines of, like, chicks yeah. waiting to get in. And, you know, they were dressed, you know, super hot. And here I am with me and my, like, girlfriends. And we're like, hey. I'm a meta med sister. I wouldn't I'm even like, say that. The door guy's like, oh, hey, Amira, come oh, on in. How many? You? Come on in. I'm like, thank you. And then these chicks are, like, mad dogging me, like, who's that bitch? Who's Why, that she's bitch? regular. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, it's well, all good. Start promoting for us again, you know. Yeah. Right. Of course. I. Of course. <clears throat> this has been a fun podcast. To. We've done a couple of them today. Five, technically. Which one was the oh. best? Ranking uh, from one. This to was five. fun. You know, we're putting them all in the bag. We have This is my favorite. Thank God we have not had one bad podcast uh, so far. And a big thanks to Wolf, man. Thank you, Wolf. Thanks, Ramirez. Wolf. Thanks. This guy does so much here at Jam in the Van. Uh, check out Jam in the Van. It's here in West LA. It's a multiplex thing building with live comedy live music a lot of joints a lot, a lot of weed of very weed friendly um and we do our podcast here every week go to jam in the van.com i want to thank jake and dave who own the place jake trainer thank the, you thank you the manager jack higgins our awesome creative director my co-host blake barty my name is ahmed ahmed follow me at ahmed ahmed comedy and follow you at blake barty comedy and a huge thanks to my little sister, my beautiful little yeah. sister. Thanks, you guys, Amira, for having me. Amen. Thank you, thank you. Thanks for having me. One more Appreciate plug. It. Go to sugardynamite.com. Yep. Check out her stuff. It's Guys can use it. You it know. smells delicious. It smells delicious. If you're ashy, I need some. Use but it. I, for some reason, I'll give I didn't you a get any today. It's okay. Yeah, guys like to dip their balls in it. It's so <laughs> gross. Okay, you're my sister. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> 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 All right, let's get out of here. <laughs> Why'd you even go there? We're about to end on a high note. Of course, it is a high note. It's hilarious. No, you got to end on something funny. I'm it's your funny. brother. Don't say balls in front of me. Anyway, <laughs> sugardynamite.com. Uh, XO Amira Ahmed yes. on Instagram is, is her personal page. Don't be a fucking dick and slip into her DMs. I'll find you. Uh, Sugar Dynamite on Instagram. Yep. And um, discount code. Anything? Oh, discount code is Hollywood. Hollywood, twenty percent off now through April thirtieth. So I don't know when this is gonna drop. This episode. I, I'll put it on the screen. But we'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll put it on the screen. And if you need more time, if you need more time, extend, I can, can extend, extend the discount. No problem. And uh, yeah. we have shows in Chicago coming up. Chicago Comedy Bar, April fifteenth nice. and sixteenth. Blake and I will be there. Yeah. We have shows. I and we have shows. At the Stand Up Comedy Club in Bellflower, uh, March 27th. It's, it's a fundraiser for Palestinian students. And uh, March 30th, I'm at a Men and Friends with me, you, Joey Urell, Jen Sturger, and a couple of special guests. Sweet. And then we're going to do a live podcast here at some point. Stay tuned for that. Um, we're also shifting our Huntington Beach show at Cruisers to Newport Beach. The oh. Cruisers. Go ahead. We're going to be doing the rec room. 26th, That's March. right, Rec Room in Huntington Beach, March 26th. Check and that out. I have a show, uh, Plug. HB Patio. Plug, baby. Huntington Beach. I think it's invite only, but, you know, find, the, find the guy. House oh, of then uh, March slip into his DMs. 10th, uh, House of Blues, Anaheim. So that should be fun. It's great. Uh, and then what else was I forgetting? I feel like I'm, I'm forgetting one more thing. Nah, 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 like, nah. how amazing. No more masks. Like, we can actually laugh and, like, mm -hmm. you can be heard. Like, you can hear your audience laughing. And Oh, <laughs> sea legs. I forgot to mention this. Oh, can't wait for that. So we used to do a show last summer, excuse me, at a place called Sea Legs in Huntington Beach. Outdoor venue. It's a destination spot. It's in the Huntington Beach State Park arena. And last summer... During the pandemic, we had Bill Burr, Tiffany Haddish, Lunell, Adam Carolla, Jeremy Piven, Brian Callen, Fortune Themester, uh, the list goes on and on. Mm -hmm. So we are rebooting that 
it's not going to be every Friday. We're just going to do it uh, a little one-offs here and there. But our first one is May 13th, Friday the 13th, and it'll be our 15-year Axis of Evil comedy reunion tour. Sweet. With Looking myself, forward. Maz Jobrani, Aaron Cater, Omid Singh will be hosting. So Get your funny. tickets on Eventbrite. Just go to Eventbrite, type in Axis of Evil Comedy Reunion Tour, or you can get your tickets at the door and pay cash. It's a 1,500-seat venue outside on the beach. Check that out. And then Adam Carolla will be there doing his live podcast May 20th. Awesome. So insane. Those are our Great. plugs. Love you. Thank Love you. you. Thanks. Blake. Thanks. Hey, All right. Wolf, you're the best. Thank you, Wolf. That's another episode of Hollywood Tales. Stay tuned for more. Peace out. Thank you, guys.